Uh, AJ, we've taken personal, this is what you're talking about, taking personal responsibility and desire to look after yourself. And um, I can see it slipping into self-reliance very, very quickly. There's a difference between personal responsibility and, per and self-reliance. So wh where do we draw a line between God-reliance and self-reliance? Well, God's love transforms our soul. If I understand that at the soul level, I will not be attempting to transform my own soul. If I am, I'm being self-reliant. How many of you are being self-reliant? Almost all of you at this point. Because you have been trying to transform your own soul. That's self-reliance. So how do we let go of that? So how do you let go of that? You, you have to come to some kind of emotional understanding, not an intellectual one, that God's love transforms your soul. There has to be these qualities. That we've talked about many times before of faith, trust, not in yourself, but in God. That God has made this beautiful system where you do not have to transform your own soul. God's love can do it for you as long as you do a few things that are to do with your will. That are to do with the expression of your desire. Does that make sense? So, so I see people trying to transform, they think they're being humble. People trying to transform their own soul are not being humble. Because it, it, it actually is against one basic truth of the, of the universe, and that is that God's love transforms your soul. Nothing else can. There's physically nothing else that can transform it. So only God's love can. So every time I am trying to transform my own soul by some kind of physical, emotional, or spiritual effort, I am actually in self-reliance and I'm not having faith and trust in God because I'm in self-reliance. I'm actually thinking I'm doing it. And I can't. It's a physical impossibility because it's only God's love that transforms the soul. I can't transform my own soul. Beyond that sixth dimensional condition, I cannot transform it. So to me, we often have different definition of self-reliance, you see. A lot of people are saying that they have God-reliance but they don't yet in their heart accept this one truth that actually there's nothing I can do to transform my soul. Nothing I can do to transform my soul because God's love is the thing that transforms it. All I can do is either receive God's love or reject it. That's all I can do. So I can use my will to receive or reject God's love, but it's God's love that does the transformation. Behind you, Matt. Um, so is there a bit of a difference then um, with transfer, transforming a God's love, transforming my soul compared to growing in love? Is it a very different thing? You can personally grow in love, yeah. but only to the sixth dimension. Right. That is the extent or the limitation of your original design. Yeah. So, so you can, and many do, and let's face it, most of the earth is in this place. Every religion is in this place pretty much on the planet at yeah. the moment, where they are trying to be good, trying to be more loving, trying yeah. to be more this, trying to be more that. And the reason why they're trying is because God's love isn't transforming their soul because they're not receiving it. Mm. So they have to try. But you, the truth is you can try to become more loving, but only to the pinnacle of your own existence. The finite ability that God originally gave you was to be in the sixth dimension with regard to your love. Okay. That's the limit of your development. So you can do it to that limit, mm. but that is a finite limit that cannot be increased without God's love entering your soul. So transforming my soul is something just completely different to that then, is it? Allowing God's love to transform your soul is something completely different to that. Yes. The whole natural love path is all about transforming your own soul, attempting the process. And yet no one's ever done it. <laughs> no one's ever done it fully on earth, but yeah. millions, billions of people have done it in the spirit world, mm. have transformed their own soul to the sixth dimension, right. to their original finite condition, okay. limitation. Yeah. Yeah. Billions of people have done that. Billions of people are still doing it. In the spirit world and on earth. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. But what I'm saying to you is that
to actually transform your soul requires something further than that. Mm. To actually mm. develop your soul beyond that condition requires the transformation of the soul itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the soul turning. You know, you know this old... Yeah. Myself and Mary, when we went up to um, um, Cairns, we, we went to a butterfly house, the butterfly house up at Corunda. Has anybody been there? It's really lovely there, isn't it? Mm. It always has an emotional effect on us, myself and Mary, the first time we enter the place. So Mary spent most of the time crying in the, in the butterfly house this time, just like I did the first time I entered it. But there we have a caterpillar, right, with his... Uh, right? Merrily munching away on life. Mm. He grows to his finite capacity... In the case of, uh, is it the monarch uh, moth? It's a pretty big capacity. No, the Hercules moth. Pretty big capacity. We had one of, them, one of the grubs on our, in our backyard of a Hercules moth. And no joke, he was about so long and about that thick by the time he stopped eating. All right. But it stop eating he did because he could not grow beyond that capacity. And he could never become the moth. He could never fly. He could never do things that the grub is, only, is not able to do. You understand? Mm. Then he had to go through a pupating stage, or a, what do you call it, chrysalis stage. Mm. Let's draw it for him. For him, it's a, it's a stage where he's wrapped up in leaves and stuff like that and, uh, and sitting there for... He might sit like that. It, potentially the Hercules moth can sit like that for years, up to three or four years. And do you know what happens inside of it? It completely disintegrates and goes to a liquid. It doesn't have a skin anymore, yeah. doesn't have the structure anymore. Oh inside God. of that, it goes to a liquid completely. Every butterfly does this. Every caterpillar does this, turning into a butterfly. And then, due to a chain of events, in the case of this moth, if there's a big rain, generally, it then comes out of its chrysalis state and into the huge moth that it is. Not quite that big, in the case of Hercules, but close. It's about that big right? for that particular moth. Giant, giant moth. Now, in this state, it has the ability to fly. It has the ability to experience far more things. It actually even eats different things. Did you know that? The grub eats leaves. What does the... Nectar. It, yeah, nectar. It's very different. It even eats different. Everything's different. Now, God's love, if it's not received, will only ever allow you to be the biggest possible grub you could ever be. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> this transformational effect of the chrysalis, in this case, inside of your soul, can only occur by the grub deciding to receive God's love. That's the only thing that can occur. Without it doing this transformation, it is impossible for it to ever become the angel... God desire, designed for us to become. And I don't use that in a, you know, like this holier than thou thing, a way, but rather it's a complete transformation from the original possibilities. Yeah. Does that make sense? Exactly the same. Mary, you want to go ahead? And then there was someone, Alex, up the back. To me, that's a difference between self-reliance and God-reliance. For me, what I feel like I'm coming up against constantly lately is how much I want to define... I want to be the best scrub I can be, and there's no trust in me... You want to that define that place, yeah. I want to define it, and I want to master it, and I want to... It's all about me <laughs> making me good. Yep. Um, and why I find this whole process so moving is because of the trust involved in becoming the chrysalis and completely dissolving every conception of what I think a good 
me is mm. so that God can create this me that's just far above and beyond anything I could conceive of as the grub. Mm. Um, and for me, that that is the difference between self-reliance is like I'm a grub and I can be a good grub and I know what a good grub looks like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that grub can't even imagine the, the butterfly and... And also, God reliance is in the chrysalis of yeah. the sweaty, dissolving p- part of, I don't know what's going to happen next. Yes. And that, that is the key part, isn't it? Yeah. Like you said. And yeah. that's when we were discussing up there, that's what we felt each time. Just <laughs> like for myself and Mary, when we went in the butter, butterfly house, this is what we felt the most was this, the trust, the trust yeah. in, and faith involved in that process. The grub trust completely that if it completely dissolves into a liquid it's going to come out something different at the end it can't hold on and go hang on hang i'm on. losing a leg yeah. <laughs> it just has another to let leg it go. gone another yeah. arm gone another one bites the dust <laughs> yeah does that make sense to everyone this is what we need to understand about god's love you see you see what we're trying to do most of us are trying to do our own transformation. We try and we try and we try and try. And you can continue doing that if you like, but you are still on the natural love path. You're still on it. That's what we do on the natural love path. We try and try and try until we reach the pinnacle of our original creation, which is the limitation the finite limitation of that sixth dimension. And that's it. That's the full extent that we're ever going to go after that while we continue to do the same thing. Yes? To do this requires something different happening. It requires some physical transformation to occur that shifts us from just trying to be the best we can be into being what God created us to be. Yeah. And it feels like to me there has to be an acknowledgement of the truth of God in that, that I am God's creation and not my own. And not my own. And yeah. that I think the injury of self-reliance screams about that because it feels like no control yeah. and yet it's the most beautiful thing that we can end up acknowledging because someone much more powerful, loving, uh, creative than this finite soul. Put and an intelligent, imprint, I would add to that. <laughs> yes. Put an imprint inside of me that is going to make me something ama- beyond what I can imagine, yeah. but only if I acknowledge him in that process. Only if I engage the process. And acknowledge his, his creation is me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So to actually have a pure longing for God's love requires, can you see, quite a number of emotional shifts in our awareness. It requires us to see the difference between self-reliance and God-reliance. It requires us also to be humble to the release of emotion so that love can enter us, and it requires that we have an openness to truth. But what we need to also have is some faith and trust that this condition can be reached. And to have faith and trust requires releasing a lot of false beliefs about our parents and what a parent was and what our definition of a parent. Can you see that? If our definition of a parent is someone who's never going to love us unless we try hard, can you see we're on the natural love path still? Because that's not how God is. God's loving us if you try not at all. And in fact, you can't try to transform your soul. You can only do things that prevent the transformation of your soul. You can't try to transform it because you have limitations, personal limitations, every single one of us. Does everyone get the principle of that first step? Isn't it interesting how you can listen to truths about divine love for two, three, four years and it not dawn on you some very basic things. You find that fascinating sometimes? How some very basic things don't dawn with you. They don't actually settle inside of you emotionally until much, much later sometimes in the process. I just find that remarkable at times. Because you can see that words 
lack power, don't they? Like many of these words I've said to you before, but they lack power and they can't have power. Words are like that. It's only emotions and feelings that can eventually have the power that we need. You, you look at your life. You can't enjoy your life with your intellect. You will enjoy your life when you feel enjoyment of your life. And sometimes that might be enjoying your intellect, emotionally enjoying your intellect. But we need to emotionally engage our life. So this is a basic thing that I'd like you to consider before we go to our break, is just this basic, and while you're in the break perhaps, this basic principle that we cannot transform our own soul, we must receive divine love if we wish our soul to transform beyond its original capacity. <laughs> 